My name is Thomas Vale, or at least it was. I'm a photographer. I had it all, a wife, Allison, friends, a career. And in one moment, it was taken away. All because of a single photograph. I have it. They want it. And they will do anything to get the negative. I am keeping this diary as proof that these events are real. I know they are. They have to be. When my life was taken, I was incarcerated at Callaway Psychiatric Hospital. There was one person who seemed to know something about the nightmare that awaited me. His name was Dave Powers. He called himself Eddie. For the last two months, I've been trying to find some connection to him, who he is, where he came from, family and friends. And what I've come up with is an old military record and phone book listings for more than 100 Dave Powers in two dozen cities. The first 14 have been dead ends. This is the fifth city and the 15th name. I'm hoping, I'm always hoping, that my luck's about to change. Excuse me. Excuse me. Twenty bucks for an overnighter. Ten if you can finish your business in under an hour. Yeah? What about it? Do you know this man? I know a lot of people. Don't know that I know what I know, though. Well, uh, maybe this will help. I know him. He's a head case. Always walking around with two eyes behind his head and looking over his shoulders if maybe somebody's about to jump on him. Were they? You ever see anybody following him? I mean, anyone asking questions? Not until you showed up. This is almost getting to be more of a problem to keep him than to throw him out on his ear. So why didn't you? How many people you know pay a year's tab in advance? Eddie paid you a year in advance. Only thing kept him out of the hatch, as far as I'm concerned. How long ago was this? About nine months. I want the key to his room. Raul, did Nancy change tables? Excuse me? Nancy is in my wife. Good smile, great legs, lousy tipper. She's not at our table. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know who you're talking about. Sir? What, are you kidding? We were at that table over there. There's two other people at our table. Mr. and Mrs. Charney has had their booth reserved. Every Thursday for the last 10 years. So where is she? Sir, perhaps if you'd come to the front desk? The joke's over. So where is she? The joke's over, Raul. Where is she? I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave the restaurant. I'm not leaving the restaurant, Raul, until I find my wife, Nancy. Nancy, it's me. Open up. Conversation's over, friend. Now you either turn and leave. Hold the leg, and we'll carry you out of here.
take two, marker. B mark. And action. <gasps> All right. Talk to me. I don't know what you want me to say. Come on, Nancy. What are the rules of the game here? Who put you up to this? I don't know what you're talking about. Cut the crap, OK? It's about the photograph, isn't it? There's no way you could have gotten into my bank account and changed the locks all by yourself. Who are they, Allison? All right. They told me that if I said anything, they'd kill you. But who? Who are they? I don't know. Some men. But who? Government, military, That's what did I they know. say? I didn't want to put you in this situation. Them! I'm sorry, does he have to grab me like that? Because I spent a long time on my hair, and that just totally ruins it. Angie, this scene is crucial to the plot, OK? No, 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 just think about it. The night before, Lenny's just seen you with another man posing as your husband. Now, he's, he's got to get you alone to try to get some answers. He's desperate. I don't think he's worrying about your hair. OK, fine. I will just look like crap for the rest of the show. And look, forget about her hair. I got a problem with this whole damn scene. Popping up out of the back seat of a car, how predictable can you get? You got a problem with predictable, is that it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh, the hell with you, Robert. You're fired. Get off of my set. Get out of the building. Hey, you don't have the power to fire me. This isn't even your show. You get the straight, Phil. I am Lenny Little. You toss me, you toss the whole series. OK, OK, that's it. That's it. That's predictable. You know why? Because it's real. Because when something somebody wants very much is suddenly taken away, they're going to fight like hell to get it back, even to the point of popping up in the back seat of a car. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Maybe you have a point. Thank you. Now, you think we can do this scene? Maybe make our air date? Actors. All right, take five, everybody. Back to one. How's that line Lee Strasberg had in The Godfather? This is a profession we have chosen. Take a break. You, you're, you're one of Angie's guys, right? How do you know all this? <laughs> you all look alike. You're about that tall, good looking? No, no, I mean about the show. How do you know about all this? Who are you people? Uh, look, buddy, this is a, this is a closed set. If, if you're not with Listen, Angie... I asked you a question. What the hell are you people doing here? How do you know all this? I mean, Allison in the car, the scene in the restaurant. It's called a script. It, 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 lots of pages full of little words to tell the actors what to say. Look, pal, I'm just a director. I <laughs> just interpret. You got a problem with the script? You, you take it up with Max Webb. Who's Max Webb? He's the writer producer of this extravaganza. Are we through with the emotion here? I, I got a future to dream about again. So Lenny is sitting there in a straight jacket opposite Dr. Landers. Now, Landers is one of those friendly, benign types. I've got a buzzer. I used it. Look, this is a really bad time. If this is about my ex. Who do you work for? Who the hell are you? I said, who do you work for? 
I work for the government. Two ex-wives and the bank. It's the American dream. What are you, a fan? You know damn well who I am. Just what point do you think you're trying to make? I don't know. I don't, okay. I think, I, I think it has something to do with identity. You know, the, the individual against the oppressive, faceless society. But I don't know whether I'm making my point very well. Cut the crap, Webb. You're replaying scenes from my life. I want to know why. I suppose I'll take that as a compliment. Wasn't meant as one. Well, I've obviously struck a nerve somewhere. I mean, if you identify with Lenny, I've done a good job. If you identify with Lenny enough to find out where I live, break into my house, well, hell, I'm a writer. Sue me, I'm flattered. I just want to know what you think you're trying to prove. See, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, okay, I think that what I'm trying to prove is that Lenny doesn't have a choice. You sure about that? Hey, I'm the writer. Okay, okay. Take this week's episode, for example. Lenny actually thinks that he's going to find out all of the answers to all of his questions. You, you know, I mean, I mean, he's traveled 1,200 miles actually believing that he's going to get to the bottom of things, you know, and then by the time that he gets there, whammo! You know, they're, they're already one step ahead of him. I'm telling you, he's becoming predictable. Maybe he's doing it on purpose. To give the opposition a false sense of confidence. Hey, hey, ooh, 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 ooh that's a good idea. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, that's good. Okay, note. Idea for a way around Lenny's predictability. Maybe he's doing this on purpose. No, because, the, you see, okay, the thing is, you see, I've, I've made the heavies too good. Downright brilliant, actually. They're just not that easily fooled. Neither is he. Yeah, but Lenny is, Lenny is one guy. He's one guy. The opposition, they've got the means, they've got the money. Well, maybe you underestimate your leading man. No, I know exactly who Lenny is and what he's capable of. Lenny's in hell until he gives them what they want. And there's nothing he can do about it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, okay, yeah, I will. Mm. Oh, this stuff's got legs. I'm gonna go get a fresh batch. Not that I don't appreciate the occasional interruption, but I got work to do. I wrote the scene, my friend. I know how it ends. Oh, and don't overestimate your value. I will use this. Now.
Enjoy the show. You might learn something. Simmons? It's Max. Yeah, he was just here. No, 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 no. Everything went according to plan. Yeah. All right, about half an hour. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Simmons is in a meeting now. Yes. Okay, I can have him return your call. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm here to see uh, Mr. Simmons. Do you have an appointment? No, it's just, it's gonna take a minute. Well, I'm sorry, but Mr. Simmons can only be seen by appointment. Right, sir. Mr. Simmons, there's All right, well, how, how do I make an appointment? Yes, Mr. Simmons? Yeah. Thank you. If you'd like to leave your name and number, I can have someone get back to you. All right, okay. Good. Thank you. Right. Yes, Go 3 o'clock tomorrow. has to be moved. Oh, Okay, so everyone clear? I want to get this all wrapped up. I want every project on my desk by six. I won't be back, but I want a fax to be done. Understand? I still need to know what the regulations is on the FCC ruling. We've got a four o'clock haircut. Somebody tell Sally to confirm with Oscar. I'll take care of it, Mr. Simmons. What is Allegra, and what is your connection to Max Webb? That's a lot of questions. Talk to me, Simmons. Oh, watch, you kill me. You don't have it in you. I didn't have it in me. Things happen, people change. Who are you? You know, I can't tell you that. We'll see. I think if you kill me, it'll stop. I don't know. 
Maybe not. Maybe it'll just give me some pleasure knowing I've taken one of you bastards out. <laughs> you find that funny? How do you know that killing me isn't exactly the move they want you to make? You're in over your head. I get you? Oh, uh, uh, some cold beer. Beer, iced tea, lemonade? Lemonade's fine. You okay, buddy? Yeah, I'm fine. Who do you work for? What's your connection to Max Webb? That's a lot of questions. Talk to me, Reichardt. Or what? You gonna kill me? You don't have it in you. Yeah, I didn't have it in me. Things happen. People change. What, this thing again? Kill me Where the hell stop. does it come from? Some kind of a pirate broadcast. I heard a rumor they do it down in Mexico. Hey, leave it. It's good. Who are you? You know I can't tell you that. You think if you kill me, it'll stop? You're in over. Just what they'd expect you to do. I just don't get why he does what they expect him to do all the time. You ask me. Lenny keeps up like this. He is one dead puppy. I don't know what I expected to find when I came looking for pieces of Eddie's life. What I found was as mysterious as the man himself. Quick before I change my mind and need a change of heart. Read in the crystal ball. Read further in the ball. Anything to take the tide. Let the waters come. I've read those self help books. I know those heartfelt things. I've been missed up cards by these psychic things. Myself and a race is never tough. He plucks a lady and love is blind for argument. What's blind love? Can't wait for planets to align. Can't wait for them to be arranged. I need someone to tell me luck's about to change. <laughs>
is this place, Eddie? Sort of a shame, don't you think? At one time or another, all this seemed really important. Everyone here meant enough to someone to justify all this paperwork. You take Dave Powers, for instance. He put up a good fight. He lost. And now, he's just so much useless paper. What do you want from me? I thought we'd already been over that. Well, I'm a slow learner. Yeah. I doubt that. Where are the negatives? Why are they so important? They're not. You are. Maybe you can refresh my memory. You see, it's an attitude like that that keeps getting you into trouble. Don't you realize there's no future in running? Well, I've done okay so far. Oh, is that so? What makes you so sure of that? Well, uh, I'm here where I want to be, not back in Callaway where you want me to be. Then what am I doing here? Did you really think we didn't know about Mr. Powers? That we didn't know you'd come looking for him? Like I said, predictable. Unless I just walk away. It doesn't matter now, I mean. You've seen to that. Yeah, but you can't walk away. You never could. You just gotta dig till you get all the answers, don't you? No, sir. No. I'm afraid what I said before was the truth. When a person is driven, when something is so desperately important to him, he becomes predictable. And that's your basic problem. And your basic problem is thinking you can get everybody to play your game. Well, most people. Well, we all make our choices, don't we? So if I were to tell you that right now, right at your feet, was the last episode of the Lenny Little Show, you're telling me you could just walk away, huh? What difference does it make to me? Admit it, son. You're my biggest fan. No one else watches with your enthusiasm. See, this is the episode where Lenny finds out all the answers to all of his questions. The where, the why, the who. It's the moment of truth. read this? Uh, no, no, not yet. Oh, it's a total bummer, trust me. They got Lenny with this gas that, that like, makes him docile and helpless. It's, it's, it's like a chemical lobotomy. I mean, just read the end. I just can't believe that Lenny fell for it. Okay, he 
breaks into this big corporate place, a leg or a electric something. Allegra? Yes, that's it, that's it. Wait, I thought you said you didn't read it. Okay, well, anyway. Okay, so there's Lenny with all these ropes, and he's, like, scaling up the outside of this building, which is totally out of character because he's a photographer. He's a photojournalist. He's seen a lot of military action. That's not completely out of character. Wow, you totally, like, know this show. I don't know. I just thought Lenny was a little smarter than that. I mean, he just walked right into their trap. Maybe he had no choice. Everyone has a choice. Maybe what's in that building is too important to him. Yeah, maybe. Would you like something? No, thank you. You know what? I'm kind of glad it's over, because that Nancy character is a real backbuster. Yeah, she's complex. Her emotions are never very easy to understand. Yes, exactly. I mean, I could never figure out whether or not she was on Lenny's side. One day, I'm convinced that like, she's doing it just to protect him, and then the next, I'm, like, convinced that she's in on it. It's so hard to play a scene, you know, when you don't know where you're coming from. Does that make sense? Yeah. Maybe she just loves him. I mean, maybe you just have to assume that from the beginning, and then things fall into place from there. Yeah, maybe. Do you work for Max? In a way, yeah. Don't tell him what I said about, like, the rope and climbing the building and everything, because Max has a fit if we don't just bow down to everything that he writes. I won't say a word. I still don't buy it, though. I mean, I never would have gone into that building. It was just such an obvious setup. That's good, Robert. Keep looking. Robert, anybody could be coming. You can't afford to get caught now. Doing fine. Sorry, Phil. Last minute changes. Oh, by the way, we're going live. Get rid of guys. Max, you gotta be kidding. It's the name of the game, Phil. I had a better idea at the last minute. Even if it gives me apoplexy. Hey, I don't want to spend any more time on that rope than I have to. I look like a clod. Rope's gone, kiddo. I like the rope. With Lenny's background, he can do this kind of stuff. Word from the man upstairs, Joe. No more rope. Well, how the hell does he get inside then? He uses the card key he got from the Allegro executive, walks right through the front door and right up to room 302. The rope is so much better. I think she's right, Max. Trust me, it needed a new ending. Come on, Lenny, it's a trap. What are you doing? The guy's a bonehead. He shouldn't even be up there. Well, he's got to get the file. Ten bucks says the file's not even in there. Yeah? You're on.
in. I can't see a thing. Turn on the damned light, Vale. Switch to the infrared channels. Track his body. Sure the gas will be clear. After 60 seconds, the exhaust fans will pull out the residual gas, no problem. All right, check it. All clear. Where the hell is he? He got out. What about the fire? Son of a bitch, it's still here. Max, no! Move it or lose it. 